So today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a vision board. If you already know what a vision board is, you're going to want to skip ahead to this number right here. But if you're unsure of what a vision board is, it's just a visualization of your goals and intentions for the year. So this is really good for the new year because it can help you create some sort of physical representation of what you want to accomplish for 2021. So vision boards can be all types of different things. I mean, you can make one in Photoshop, you can draw one by hand, or you can do what we're going to do in this video today, which is make a collage. Collaging is one of the easiest ways to make a vision board, in my opinion, because you can just you know, cut pieces of paper out of a magazine, glue them on your board, and then suddenly you have this really nice, beautifully aesthetic piece of art but something that also is a good reminder to you about what goals you want to accomplish and where you see your year heading. Vision boards can be a little bit woo-woo. There is some like law of attraction stuff wrapped up in vision boards and I like personally, I'm not into that, but I do think that the power of positivity is powerful, it exists, is real. And uh, I think vision boards can be a really good way to reinforce the things that you want to do, to remind yourself of what your original goals and intentions were, and to keep you on track throughout the year. And in addition to that, they can also be a really good way to reflect on those things that you wanted to accomplish at the end of the year. So when I was making my vision board for this year, I took my vision board for last year and I just had a look over it and I said, okay, what was I thinking when I put this board together? Did I accomplish those goals? Did I achieve what I wanted to achieve? And every year so far, the answer has been like 95% yes. So anyway, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is brainstorm your goals. Make a list, write them down. It can be one goal, it can be a bunch of small ones, it can be you know categories of goals. If you want ideas for goal setting or some inspiration, you can check out my other video where I go into detail on my personal vision board, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever feels right to you is what you're gonna wanna go for. So the second thing you're gonna wanna do is to gather your supplies. If you're making a vision board like me, then you're gonna be doing a collage version. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a crap ton of magazines. <laughs> I just had a couple of magazines lying around my house and uh, some of my roommates had magazines too. So we collectively brought all of our magazines and newspapers together and we threw them on a table and we all went through them bit by bit. You can also add other things though, if you have, you know, like stickers or books or you know basically any type of paper material that you could kind of glue onto a piece of paper to make art it can work for this. You're also going to need some type of backing to like provide the base of your vision board. It could be a piece of notebook paper, it could be a paper bag, it could be a piece of cardboard from a box. It could pretty much be anything that you could glue onto but some kind of paper material is best. In the past I've used posters this year I didn't have any poster boards, so I just used a piece of paper that I had lying around. The next thing you're gonna need is some glue. Glue is very important, otherwise you can't put your, your piece of paper onto your larger piece of paper. This year I used glue sticks, but you can also use like Elmer's glue or liquid glue. I guess theoretically you could use tape too if that's all you have, but I think glue just gives it you know, like a cleaner look and it looks nice. The other thing you're gonna need is scissors because you have to cut out all of the little pieces of paper uh, before you glue them onto your backing. And optionally, you can also have like markers, colored pencils, crayons, anything to draw with if you wanna do something by hand or if you wanna add additional details onto your board like I did here. So now that you've gathered your supplies, the next thing to do is start finding your images. So go through the magazines, look page by page, and see if anything kind of jumps out at you. Is there anything that speaks to your goals? Are there any colors or pictures that feel good to you, that give you good vibes? If one of your goals is to improve your health, do you see any good pictures of, you know, like healthy food? Or if, do you see any words on the page that jump out at you? If one of your goals is to start investing, is there an article that features a title with investing in it? Cut, 
all of these pieces of paper out of the magazine. Make sure that you are throwing them to the side and create a big pile. I like to go through every single magazine that I have front to back and get a big, big pile of all of the different words and images that speak to me. And then later on, I'll go through my pile and kind of narrow it down and see what things I actually want to put on my board and what I don't. So quantity is pretty important here. You probably want to cut out more pieces of paper than you think you'll need um, and just roughly cut them. Don't worry about getting all the details down. You'll do that later. Once you have all of your pieces cut out, you're going to want to lay them out on your board and kind of figure out where you think everything should sit. As you're laying the pieces down, look and see which which pieces of magazine you might want to cut smaller or like closer to the edge, you know, give a really detailed cut or a more of a rough cut. It's good to have a combination between the two. You know, maybe you have a word that has a really nice background color and so you want to keep that really large. Maybe you have a person and you want to cut that person super small, like just get their, the outline of their body really detailed. It depends on your personal preference, but that's why when you first cut out the images, you don't have to cut them out super detailed because when you're laying them down on your piece of paper, it's likely that some of them you're gonna wanna cut in a certain way and others of them you're gonna wanna cut completely differently. So do those details when you're doing the layout or once you've decided on the layout. Don't do it when you first cut it out of the magazine. In this process of testing out the layout, you're probably gonna you know, throw some things to the side. Maybe you decide that that image that you thought you liked, ah, it actually doesn't fit on your board anymore, so you're gonna leave that one out. It's totally okay, you had all the extra so that you had some room to work with, but you don't have to put every single thing that you cut out on your board unless you want to, in which case go for it. So aesthetically, what looks good to you? Do you wanna put all of one color in one corner? Do you wanna make it a rainbow? Do you wanna do it by theme, like all of your financial goals in one corner, all your health goals in another? Do you wanna have, you know, like words on one side, pictures on the other? Whatever you wanna do, whatever speaks to you, lay it out in a way that makes sense. I personally like a combination of words and images and a combination of organic and inorganic shapes. So I don't think it looks super good when you have like a ton of rectangles or a ton of circles. I think that contrast looks really nice. And I also have done boards in the past where they've been really word heavy and not had enough images. And I don't think that looks as nice either. I also really like for my collage images to hang just a little bit over the side of my backing. Something about it, I don't know, just looks really curated to me and I really like that look. So I tend to have some overhang. Once you're happy with your layout, then you're gonna wanna start gluing things down. So this can be a little bit tricky when you have all of your pieces laid out. You don't wanna like, you know, move them around too much when you're putting down the glue and then completely forget how you wanted things to be laid out. But if you're careful, you can kind of lift up one corner, put them down or like lift up a few pieces in one section, glue them down. Don't pull everything off at one time, otherwise you'll completely forget <laughs> where they were and where you wanna glue them down. And then eventually you'll be finished gluing all your pieces down and you will have your finalized version of your vision board. You can hang it up wherever you want. It's always good to put it in a place where you're gonna see it regularly, but you don't necessarily have to look at it every day. You don't even have to look at it throughout the year. But I kind of like to, I think it's a good way to continue to remind myself of what I want to accomplish throughout the year. And a really good way of making your vision board look, you know, a little less not cute is to put it in a frame. I did that this year. This is the first year that I've ever framed my vision board and it is like totally a game changer, but I wouldn't really recommend it to people because frames are super expensive. So if you happen to just come in contact with a frame or maybe you find a frame from the thrift store or something, it's definitely a good idea to frame your vision board. But definitely not a requirement. You can just leave it on your piece of paper, tape it up on a wall, maybe put it in your closet, put it in the bathroom, put it in some place where you're probably gonna see it pretty often unless you never wanna look at it again, in which case, don't. All right, well yeah, there's the final, final product. I, think I gotta take it home and hang it up.
hopefully it's even. I think it's a little uneven. Yeah, it is. It's a little uneven. The perfectionist in me wants to fix it. Ugh, gosh, should I? No. Convince me not to. <laughs> Tell me that it's not important, that it's perfect. <laughs> it's not important that it's perfect. Yeah, it's not working. <laughs> but yeah, frame it, hang it up, and now you are done. So here is my vision board for the year. Um, the sun is a shining. <laughs> I think you can see it best that way, but you can see it in the frame. It kind of looks like an actual piece of art, but before I put it in the frame, it did not look this good. Let me tell you, it's still a cute, but not this good. <laughs> so quick summary, vision boards are super, super easy to do. These instructions have been a little complicated, but to just break it down really quickly for you. First, you brainstorm your goals. Second, you gather your supplies. Third, you start cutting out your pieces from the magazines. Fourth, take your magazine pieces and lay them out on your piece of paper. See what layout you like best. Five, glue all the pieces down. And six, hang your board up. And that is it. My friends, congratulations. You now are the proud owner of a vision board. <laughs> I hope it helps you accomplish a lot of your goals this year in 2021. But don't be too hard on yourself if you can't get all the things done. 2020 was a crazy year. I'm sure 2021 is going to be an even crazier year. But it's always good to plan and have goals in mind and set intentions for yourself. And just make sure that you're living your life in an intentional way instead of just living on autopilot. I should have some additional videos out soon where I go over my personal vision board and reflect on some of the past ones that I've done to see whether or not I really did accomplish my goals during those years. And um, that is all for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see new videos. I wish you guys a very happy new year. Good luck in 2021, and I will see you in the next one.